Hi everybody, my name is Trey Sinclair and today we're going to be learning about how to grow citrus in North Florida. I've got some special guests. We've got Kathy Mendelera. We're at the historic Franklin Mercantile. She's got a gorgeous Meyer lemon tree that we're going to uh, learn some tips maybe on how to uh, get more yield and have a healthier Meyer lemon tree uh, right behind us. And to do that, we have got some experts. We have the Tabor family. Uh, they have run the Glen St. Mary's Nursery Association. It's the Tabor Nursery for, uh, gosh, almost over a century. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, the, the history of citrus in North Florida is tied uh, to this nursery. So what better way to get some answers on how to grow citrus in North Florida than by talking with the Tabor family. I have Maggie, uh, Lynn, and Tab Tabor with us. So let's get right into it. With me, I've got a Valencia orange tree tab. You gotta help me. What's gonna give me the best chance at life for this tree? All right, well, we'll we will do our best. When you think about citrus plants in general, they generally require full sun. So a little afternoon shade, a little morning shade is okay, but they're gonna need eight to 10 hours of full sun. So you want a good open area, not in too much shade. Uh, the don't want, they don't like wet feet, so you don't want to put it in a low, low area that's going to be wet all the time. Uh, well drained soil is, is important. Well, what if I can't change my soil? Am I just looking for a part of my, my yard that maybe is a little bit higher or a little bit better draining? Is that what you mean by that? So after three days after rain, if you have areas that hold water, you want to stay away from Okay. But up, up by the house, it's higher and drier like we have right here. That's, that's just fine. So, um, so full sun. Also think about uh, uh, the weather. So if you have a citrus tree, you want a little bit of protection from the northern winds. So if you put them on the south side of your house, or if you have a hedge, just any type of protection from the, the north wind um, or, or uh, the weather. So that gives a little, little more protection. Now, when you're talking about protection, uh, people in South Florida, clearly, they're not worried about cold winds as much as we are here in the north. We, we tend to have really hot summers and really cold winters, which kind of makes it an unusual uh, place to grow citrus, right? So this, this uh, the wind is what you're talking about if you're growing it in North Florida, especially, right? That's, that's, that's correct. Okay, that's correct. The chill factor will be increased by the wind. So just a little protection from, from the north is preferable. So, uh, what are some other tips uh, about, I've got my plant, i found my, my spot that I want to plant this, this uh, beautiful Valencia orange in. Now what do I need to do? Okay, when you're preparing your, uh, uh, your hole, you get a nice uh, spade here, like from Road True Value, or as I always called it, the Glen Cash Door. But, uh, and you want to, to dig your hole about uh, uh, half the size wider than your, than your pot, and uh, about the same depth as your pot. And when you, it's better to plant a mini plant, especially citrus, shallow rather than too deep. Okay. So you'd like about an inch of the root ball actually above the level of the ground. Okay, so your goal isn't to pack it and get it nice and level. It's actually, you want to be a little proud of the ground around right. it. Right, a little higher than the ground so it would be actually mounded down. That'll allow the drainage and allow the roots to breathe. Now, if you've just planted a plant uh, of, of citrus and it's a little shallow, is it safe to maybe dig it up and build it up while, it's, while the plant's still young? Yeah, before it roots in, you can, you can still do that. What would be the best time of the year? Do you know, in the winter or the spring? I would for, uh, I think in the, uh, the spring would be the ideal time to plant something like this uh, after, after the uh, threat of the last frost. I, w I would plant 
if you're afraid it's not going to live in your container, I would not be afraid to plant it right now. But just realize if we get down to 26 degrees like we did a couple of weeks ago, uh, they're tender before they're rooted in. So cover, cover it up if you have a 32 is gonna, not going to hurt it, but the mid 20s you might get a little bit, a little bit of dip. And uh, you can cover up with the uh, veg. Okay. Yeah, because I know they, they talk about little specialty things that you can warm your plants up right. or keep them warm, but you know, different types of cutting. The bed sheet works just as well, or maybe good enough. Yeah, they're good enough okay. because you can get specially ordered things, but the most important thing is to cover it up. Okay. You want air to be able to get through, you want water to be able to get through, and then when the spread of freeze and water, you, you pull it off and let it breathe. So spring is the best time to plant these. Now, obviously, uh, I don't have a time machine. I can't. I can't go into the future. I've got this plant now. Uh, is it better to keep it in the container, or if I'm going to be planting in the ground, would it be better to just put it in the ground now that I have it? If I, I would North Florida, and we're probably not going to get terrible freezes, but I would go ahead. I mean, plant it right now would be. Okay. Um, if I bought it, if I was waiting to buy it, probably the spring would be the ideal time. But I would not be afraid. Are, are citrus happy in containers like this? I mean, if I wanted to keep it warm, um, and I've got a, a you know a, a warm place yeah, that it can the sun, yeah. and, and still uh, I could keep it right there until the spring. If you want to keep this, and you could keep it outside, keep it well watered, and then on those cold nights, bring it inside your garage. And it's going to be just fine. And then go ahead and plant it maybe in the first. Do I fertilize these citrus when I plant? Um, and is there is there kind of a game plan that you have with fertilizing citrus? When you think about fertilizing, you're encouraging new growth don't want to encourage new growth if we're going to get a freeze next week because the new growth is tending to the tree that will be here we should be very susceptible to a freeze right now. So, um, so I would, even if you plant it now, I would, I would not fertilize it until maybe uh, middle of March or so. Okay. Because that's when it's going to be fine until then, but when you put the first fertilizer on, then it's going to encourage that. Okay. I think and as far as fertilizers go, you know, there's there's special fruit and citrus fertilizers that uh, that you can get from Rogue uh, True Value. Uh, if you're fertilizing everything in your yard, um, you can get a 10 10 10 and use it in your azaleas and put that on your, on your citrus as well. What's your philosophy about fertilizer? Is more better than than too little, or well, I think uh, some of this is uh, sometimes they make fertilizer in slow release. So read the label. If it's a slow release, they have a, it can be good for like three months. And so you want to read the label on the fertilizer. It says every six weeks. So I, I'm not a very good at following instructions, but this is one that I probably should have that, that's to right. the label. That's okay. Right. Okay. I mean, there's fertilizers out there that are slow release for six months, and if that's the case, you don't want to keep on adding. You want to follow follow the directions. You could kill the plant that way, right? Yeah, you can you can over fertilize, and then too much fertilizer, you know, will we'll, uh, go in the ground and affect the aquifer. We want to be mindful of what the label is. Right, the environmental impact of this too. Okay, so th that's good information. Now, let's fast forward. Let's say it's springtime. I've got my plant in the ground. It's happy. It's healthy. I've done my fertilizing. When should I start thinking about things like pruning, trimming, mulching, uh, you know, things like that? Um, Pruning like this, this one is well pruned right now, so the first year you're, you're going to be fine. Uh, after next fall, which is its um, fruiting season, and the fruit has come off of it, uh, 
after the thread of the last freeze. Uh, so about the time you're putting the fer fertilizer on, after the uh, uh, before the bloom set, is when you can do some minor trimming. Uh, won't pruning hurt the plant? I mean, doesn't that stress it out, or is it actually good for? The plant? It's 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 good for it if you prune right before you put your, the fertilizer on your new growth. It's going to question I had about uh, the fruits on the tree is, uh, let's say you've got a young tree, you, you're starting to get fruit on it, but maybe you've missed the, the growing season and you don't think those fruits are going to uh, ripen. Do you leave them on? Do you pluck them off? What, what would your guidance be on something like that? Yeah, I, I think it's pretty exciting when you see the first fruit on the tree. So, when they appear to be right, uh, you know, keep them all in the world, try them and sample them. And also, when the fruit comes out, that's when they provide room for the new bloom and the new fruit for the next season. So you should always pluck those fruits off, especially if you're looking for yield. If you want more fruit, you need to take right. the fruit off. And okay. if you wait, nature's going to take care of itself. It will eventually drop drop the fruit, so you might as well take it off while you can enjoy it. Right? So it's, it's always exciting to try the first fruit off of your orange <laughs> or your sassy, <laughs> or a little uh, lemon for your lemonade. There you go. Yep. Well, thank you so much, Tab. I learned a lot. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to keep this tree alive, and hopefully, you guys at home learn something as well. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Kathy Mendelaire. I'm here at the historic Franklin Mercantile here in the side yard. And I've got Lynn Tabor here. Uh, we are here to look at the Meyer lemon tree. And he's going to show me how I can make this scraggly tree look like the trees in these old Florida postcards where they were so strong that you could put a ladder up to them and, uh, and pick from way up high. Okay. We are going to, going to talk about the citrus tree behind us and try to give you some ideas of what can be done, when it can be done, and what kind of products to use to make this a better looking citrus tree. So, um, as we can see, there hasn't been a lot done to this tree. True. <laughs> okay. Um, there are several things that need to be done, uh, not particularly right now, but after the danger of a hard freeze is over, early spring, then we look at this tree and we say, what do we need to do? Well, there are several things that need to be done. And you're aware of yeah. <laughs> this. Um, to, to start with, let's, uh, you notice the growth factor. Yes, yeah. it's real scraggly, it's, overgrown. Yeah. Uh. Let it go. Okay. Let it do its thing. Until spring? Until spring. Okay. And then uh, from spring on, you, you'll have to watch it. Grow fast. Yes. And but you need to have it repaired. You need to then you have your side proven. Yes. And it's like starting new. But uh, you can do it and fertilize around the base, grass away. Yeah, get the grass away. Greened up. Can we mulch it or anything? You can mulch it. Okay. Oh, uh, what about the Spanish moss? Is that a go? <laughs> That, that Spanish moss looks good, but you know, it doesn't really harm it, it doesn't, okay. that much. Yeah. Um, as it is here, it kind of looks good, but okay. it's, it's not hurting the, okay. the tree itself. Okay. If it gets thicker and really holds light off, well, then that's too much. Okay. That's kind of nice looking. Thank you. Okay, so I'll take some of the thinner 
branches, and the smaller branches off of the bigger to, to provide more sunlight to come into. Okay. So come through. All right. Open it up. All right. Into the sun. Trim it back. Yeah. Even it up off the off the ground. Okay. And get the grass from underneath out. All right. And fertilizer in the spring. Uh, good citrus fertilizer is fine. Or almost any. It could be a it could be a deep uh, citrus fertilizer. Or it mm -hmm. could be an ordinary. Okay. Well, you got the uh, six four six there. That's that's right. made for citrus specifically. This is made for citrus, avocados, and mango. Yeah. Okay. Six four six. All right. <clears throat> but you don't have to use a six four six. Okay. Because they make these for all these special occasions, but you can okay. use a ten ten ten. Okay. Uh, Twelve. Okay. Six eight. There's your nitrogen and uh, your scientific parts equal. Okay. You'll get results. I'm going to do what you yeah. say, Lynn. <laughs> well, it's hard to say because it can be said differently. Yeah, but that's by, okay. By many people. All right. But well, we're going to trim it up in the spring, and I'll take pictures and I'll, I'll show you my progress. That sounds good. I know you can do it. <laughs> I know you can do it.